Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day, and it's Tuesday, and I hope you're having a great Tuesday. Uh, we're, uh, you know, in our second week now of this July shutdown of the worship services in person, so I hope you joined us online. If you missed it this weekend, you can watch them anytime you want. Just go to our website, calvarylhc.com, and you can uh, catch up on our sermons or the entire worship service of this last weekend. Hey, today I get to share with you out of Proverbs 22. And uh, the very first verse is the one that caught my attention. But before I share that with you, uh, have you ever wondered what people think about you? Well, if you're normal, of course you do. You, you kind of wonder what people are thinking about you. Uh, a lot of us have social media and we wonder what people are liking and what they're not liking and what they comment on, what they don't comment on. Uh, and, and a lot of times we obsess over what people think about us. Well, God wants us to be people of great character. And, and that's what Solomon tells us in Proverbs 22. He says, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. And favor is better than silver or gold. He, he's saying, look, uh, your character matters. Now, when he's talking about good name, he's not just talking about uh, whether you get likes on social media or whether uh, people speak fondly of you when they talk about you. What he's talking about is your reputation regarding your character, who you are, and how people understand you. And you know that's important to me, and it's important to God, it's important to Calvary, because character is one of our core values, because we believe you cannot represent Jesus unless you reflect his character. In fact, we do a lot of damage when we try to speak for Jesus, whether it's on social media or in the public arena, and our character doesn't line up with Jesus Christ. Because people look at us and they see hypocrisy and then they judge Jesus because of us. So I want to challenge you to think about valuing your reputation. Again, not the social reputation, but the moral reputation that you have as you represent Jesus Christ. And then I want to just share with you a couple of verses out of this same chapter of Proverbs that, if you will, are sort of a character check. Sort of uh, how you get to have that good name rather than great riches. So the first one is down, found in verse 4. And, uh, and these are just encouragements for you to kind of look at yourself and go, is this reflected in my character? So verse 4, uh, Solomon says, The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Um, we know that humility is one of those character traits of Jesus that he demonstrated because he left the glory of heaven to come and be a servant in this world. And he got down and he washed his disciples' feet. And he said, if I've done this for you, you should do this for each other. And, and he's called us. He said, the, the one who wants to be great should be the servant of everyone. And I would just ask you, is being a servant high on your value list? When people look at you and, and think about who you are, do they see somebody who is a willing and ready servant? Or do they see somebody who wants to avoid doing the dirty work? So being uh, a servant, humility, is one of those marks of the Jesus character. And then uh, if you look at verse 6, Solomon says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. He's talking about family discipline. When I talk about discipline, I'm not talking about beating your child or being harsh. What I'm talking about is intentional instruction in the things of God. Teaching your children that there are consequences to their actions, that you really are going to reap what you sow in life, and then demonstrating that out in their life. And, it, and it's not a promise that says if you take your kids to church, they're going to grow up and love Jesus. But it is a principle that says when you invest in your kids and you want to teach them the spiritual values that you hold dear, they're going to stick to those when they're older. And, and so uh, is discipline, is that intentional spiritual leadership present in your family? When people talk about you, do they say, wow, he or she really leads his or her kids well in Christ? And then uh, another character that uh, I'd encourage you to check is generosity. Look at verse 9. He says, whoever has a bountiful eye will be blessed for he shares his bread with the poor. Basically, he says, whoever's generous is going to be blessed because they're giving food to those who are hungry. 
Generosity, again, is one of those marks of the Christian life. Not giving because you have to, not giving because somebody expects you to, not even giving to get something back, but giving because that's the heart of God. Being generous to people who are struggling. Again, the Apostle Paul said, uh, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly, and if you sow generously, you'll reap generously. So uh, you got to decide what you're going to give. And, and uh, somebody who has the character of Christ, who has that good reputation, is going to be a generous person. By the way, I'll just brag on Calvary because we got lots of generous people around here who are giving just incredibly so that we can serve people and care for people both in Parker and Lake Havasu, but also to the ends of the earth in really incredible ways. And then the last thing that I would mention is uh, just being a, a peacemaker or someone who promotes peace. Uh, verses 24 and 25, uh, and this is kind of put in the negative. He says, Make no friendship with a man given to anger, nor go with a wrathful man, lest you learn his ways and entangle yourself in a snare. Don't hang out with people who are easily angered. Why? Because Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Jesus himself is our peace. He's the one who broke down the dividing wall between us and God and between uh, people of all kinds. And so if we're going to really represent Jesus, if we're going to have a good name that is more valuable than riches, we need to be people who are promoting peace, who are, who are living out forgiveness, who are bringing people together in reconciliation and healing, not those that stir up anger and start fights and divide people. So I pray that your name would be good in the eyes of God, because if it is in the eyes of God, it doesn't really matter what other people think, but I promise you they'll think more, more highly of you and it'll be more valuable than riches that you could ever earn in this world. God bless and let's live out the character of Jesus because we can't represent Jesus unless we reflect his character.